This is First Updates Now. We're here at the Center Grove Qualifying Tournament in Indiana. Uh, we're here with Team 12231 Warrior Tech. They're going to show us a few cool things about their robot, particularly their placement mechanism, their angling mechanism, uh, a lot of cool stuff here. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. You guys have a really cool under the bot intake. How did you guys decide to go with this over the more like more commonly traveled into the robot style design? So I've been on this team I think seven years now and almost every game we've had an intake that brings it up into the robot and that's been one of our biggest challenges. So this year we decided why don't we just drag them across the floor and then put them into our uh, scoring mechanism. So we used four different sets of the GoBuilda intake stars with a belt. It is all belt driven. That gives us a little bit of slack if it starts to skip and uh, keeps the robot safe and also efficient. So we're gonna show you how that works real quick. So it takes the pixels, they come to this front part here, and they usually go in here, but I don't think we had our arm down all the way. But they would go into this arm right here. I'll have you go ahead and go up to Y. So it takes them up. We use these stars right here to bring them all the way in, just to motivate them. And then, depending on where the driver says for it to go, that's where it goes. So we have a lot of different settings, depending on what we want to do. We have one to move around pixels on the board, and we also have ones for when we're not caring about placement as much and just trying to get pixels on the board. Uh, why do you guys choose to go with a pivoting slide instead of a stationary slide here? So this really started at the beginning of the year. Uh, we had a completely different robot design that had a servo arm that would go up. And what we noticed is we would a lot of times not be able to place on the board because pixels would be in front if we dropped them. So we tried to make it so that we could still place them on the board even if there is something blocking us. So this allows us to actually use the intake because we can go down and up. And then it also helps with a lot of the space issues. When we were drawing this up, we noticed that the slides would have been taller than 12 inches, which would not help in our strategy because we want to be able to go anywhere in the field and be versatile. So with our hang mechanism, we use the GoBuilda linear actuator. Um, but since we want to stay under 12 inches, we have to um, make it almost triple its height just to get to the point that we need. So we use a string hooked up to some surgical tubing so it doesn't get tangled that pulls it back and puts the arm up so we can hang. That's actually a really simple design. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. How does your shooter uh, work? Uh, so with our drone launcher, we originally had a similar design but with continuous force springs. It was a bit less consistent than what we wanted so we decided to go with a rubber band launcher. Um, similar to a lot of teams, just pull it back and then it launches. So uh, what was your motivation behind using a custom drivetrain here? Uh, so we've used like the stock go builder ones in, in the past. Like uh, we found that they bend the uh, axles of them, which we didn't really like. We've also used a lot of different uh, drivetrains. In previous years, they were much wider. Uh, we used thicker wheels. So in power play, we were notorious for hitting stuff, like a lot of stuff. So this year we decided, let's go with something slim to make sure we don't hit things. And uh, we had all of this custom machine so that we could fit in between, especially the center plate. We have a lot of different center plates that we can use. And we decided to go with the smaller one because it gave us so much more space to work with on the outside so we wouldn't hit stuff. And it still allowed us to fit everything in the robot. That's all pretty cool. Uh, how did you guys get these and how did you yes. colorize them? So we design all of our stuff in CAD. Everything on our robot is in CAD and completely fully designed as a whole in CAD. So we had these ones. We put them with a GoBuilda design. 
so we can put anything go build it with them. Then we took the CAD files and sent them to Send Cut Send, who were able to cut them and then anodize them for us. Uh, these, the base plate that we use is actually custom made from a more local place around us. One of our mentors has access to a CNC, so we use that for that. Cool. Um, could you speak on autonomous objectives and how it's been going so far? So in autonomous, we had a bit of trouble with our TensorFlow that kind of halted us on our process. So we were able to use my blocks to implement OpenCV with our robot, which has helped us greatly. We also only use motor encoders. We don't have the ability to use odometry just yet, but it's something we're working on. And we also use uh, color sensors to tell when we drop pixels to make it more consistent when we drop them. This has been uh, Team 12231 Warrior Tech uh, here at Greenwood. I'm Kenan Hunter. Thanks for showing off your robot, and I hope you all have the best of the luck today. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.